Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Greetings all CSP listeners all over this mundo grande. Laszlo Montgomery here with a nice little bonus episode for all y'alls as one final adornment to another wonderful season of 10 Chung Yus. By popular demand, I'm featuring the CSP's very own Emma, who will be presenting today's offering. I know you only paid for 10 episodes, but you're getting one more free of charge to bring the curtain down on another winning season of the Chinese Sayings Podcast. Thanks, everyone who listened. We're going to take some time off, and it won't be long before we're back with another season of fascinating and useful Chung Yus. And now here's Emma for this season's bonus episode. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. This is Emma. I'm Teacup Media's resident Cheng Yu scholar, and I'm really excited to be back again with a bonus episode of the CSP, where I get to introduce one of my favorite Cheng Yus. So I'd say that my favorite Cheng Yus tend to be either the ones with a really good historical origin, or the ones that paint a really vivid picture. And today's Cheng Yu is one from the Strategies of the Warring States, that happens to fit both definitions. So without further ado, let's get into the character-by-character character breakdown. And today's Cheng Yu is eight words long, so this is going to take a while. Yu bang xiang zheng, yu wang de li. Let's do the first part. Yu bang xiang zheng. Yu is a sandpiper, which is a wading bird that lives along riverbanks. And bang is a river clam. Neither of these characters you'll see that often in everyday life but I guarantee you everyone knows them in the context of this cheng yu. And xiang means mutual. Zheng means a fight or a conflict. So put together we have yu bang xiang zheng, a sandpiper and a clam in mutual conflict. And the second part of this cheng yu is yu wang de li. So yu is the character for fishing, and you're going to see it in front of anything that has to do with fishing as an industry or a pastime. So yu min is a fisherman, and yu chuan is a fishing boat, for example. Wung is the classical Chinese way to refer to an old man, or any man, really. So yu wung is just a somewhat old-fashioned way of saying a fisherman. De means to get or obtain, and li means profit. Or benefit. So yu wang de li, the fisherman benefits. And put together we have yu bang xiang zheng, yu wang de li. When the sandpiper and the clam fight, it's the fisherman who benefits. Now you might already be getting some sense of where this is going, but to understand the full story, we have to go back 2000 years to the end of the Warring States period in China specifically the year 292 BC. Now, if you know anything about this period of Chinese history, you'll know that towards the end of the Warring States, the state of Qin in western China was gradually gaining in power. Seventy years after the events of this story, Qin would become the ultimate victor of the Warring States. It unified all the Chinese states in a spectacular campaign led by the man we now know as Qin Shi Huang, you know, the guy with the terracotta army. But even in 292 BC, it was pretty clear to anyone who knew what was going on that Qin was becoming the one to watch. And under these circumstances, the state of Zhao in today's Henan decided that it wanted to launch a war against the smaller northern state of Yan. When the Yan court heard these rumors, it knew there was no way it could resist a full-scale Zhao invasion so it decided to send an ambassador to the Zhao court to try and resolve the situation diplomatically. And the ambassador it decided to send for this life-and-death mission was a court minister by the name of Su Dai. Su Dai traveled night and day to reach the capital of Zhao, which was a city called Han Dan. 
Now, incidentally, Hanban still exists today, and it's now known as the Chengyu capital because so many Chengyu are in some way tied to this city. And when he finally reached Hanban, Su Dai was granted an audience with King Hui Wen of Zhao. You can imagine that Su Dai would have had to think long and carefully over what he wanted to say at this audience. Not only was this his one chance to persuade King Hui Wen not to launch an invasion against Yan, but Su Dai was also an ambassador from a small kingdom, speaking to one of the biggest powers in China. Even under normal circumstances, court ministers often had to present their advice obliquely to avoid offending the king. But Su Dai was in an unusually precarious situation. So when Su Dai finally came face to face with King Hui Wen, he began telling a story, and this is what he said. Your Majesty, while I was traveling from the state of Yan to your state of Zhao, I paused one day at noon by a river, and on the banks of this river I saw a clam. The clam had opened its shell fully to catch the sun, but soon a sandpiper saw the open shellfish and swooped down to try and peck out the clam meat. To protect itself, the clam snapped shut on the sandpiper's beak, and now both of them were trapped. Then I heard the sandpiper say to the clam, "You silly clam! If it doesn't rain today, and if it doesn't rain tomorrow, you're going to dry out, and I will have caught a dead clam." The clam replied, "You silly bird! If I keep my shell shut today, and if I keep it shut tomorrow." You'll starve, and I'll have a dead sandpiper in my shell. The two creatures kept arguing. They never noticed that a fisherman had been observing the whole situation, and since both of them were trapped, the fisherman crept up on them and easily caught himself both a bird and a shellfish for his meal. And at this point, Su Dai finished his story and spoke directly to King Hui Wen. He said, "Your Majesty." I'm comparing the situations of the states of Zhao and Yan to the situation of the sandpiper and the clam. If Zhao invades Yan, our two nations will be locked in an unproductive and long-winded battle. We'll use up all our resources and exhaust our armies, and by that point, we'll basically be handing ourselves to the Qin on a silver platter. We should be focusing on fighting the Qin. The Qin is our common enemy. When Su Dai finished speaking, the king of Zhao saw the wisdom of his words and wholeheartedly agreed to call off the planned invasion of Yan. So, in only eight words, this Chengyu Yu Bang Xiang Zheng Yu Wang De Li depicts a brilliant statesman coming up with a gripping allegory to describe a third party who finds a way to turn an altercation between two enemies to his own benefit. Because this Chengyu tells such a simple and vivid story, it's one of the Chengyus that is very often taught to kids. I remember being a kid in Chinese school, watching cartoons about the situation between the clam and the sandpiper and the fisherman, and Su Dai's unforgettable image of the fisherman creeping up on the sandpiper and the clam is just as useful in daily life as it was during the Warring States two millennia ago. You can deploy this Chengyu to sum up any situation, from conflicts in international politics to arguments in everyday life. In fact, you don't even need to use the full eight characters; just the first four, Yu Bang Xiang Zheng, will be enough to communicate to any Chinese person that you're trying to describe an unproductive conflict that benefits no one except a common enemy. Thank you so much for listening to this bonus episode of the CSP. And I hope to see you again soon.